current workflow and take advantage of the 3D coordination that you can get from AutoCAD, Revit, or Navisworks. And what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to hop into one of those tools. So let me hop into Revit for a second. There we go. So everybody should be able to see that. <coughs> so what I'm looking at right now is just a basic Revit model, some structure. And I'm going to hop over here to my Autodesk Point Layout ribbon. And you can see that there's actually a lot of tools on here that I can take advantage of. You know, I can add points. I can add points specifically to different kinds of elements like MEP. I can add points into families as well. So if we're looking at something like a pipe hanger, I don't want to go around my project and place 300 pipe hangers. But if I go in the pipe hanger family and place one point, that can take care of all of them when I bring it back in. And you can notice I can add tags. As I create points, maybe I want to see them. I can tag them all automatically. What I'm going to look at right now, though, is the slab analysis there. So I'm going to come over here and say slab analysis. And because this one I'm just using basic, I'm not going to import from glue or field. I'm just going to say select file to import. And I'm going to grab that CSV file. Open that up. And I can see all the different points that are coming in there. I can confirm how this is coming in. I can filter that list out if I only want to get certain ones. And I can say, you know what, I only want to grab these kinds of points, too. In this case, I do want to grab all of them, so I'll say OK. And then it confirms what's my maximum point distance from the face that I want to work with. So what's the maximum deformation I need? I'll say 8 inches. I'll say OK. What's the surface that I want to compare against? So I select that slab. Say Finish. And now I can actually see on that floor, graphically, where it sees that there's problems. So I can see that I'm high over here in that corner, and I'm low where it's blue. And I can always go through and edit that style, similar to other kinds of an analysis. And if I don't really necessarily need you know, graphics, I'd rather just show the physical points and then have a little tag off it that shows me how high that is, I can do that too. So in that case, let's say, it's going to say import, same exact process, bring in my points, say what kind of points those are. Now I have a whole bunch of these little guys here. And those points come with their information, their properties, and their data. Again, just like most objects inside of Revit, I can also tag them. Oops, there we go. Do a quick spot elevation, do all of them. On a real project, I would make sure that these were all actually legible. <laughs> but for this example, I basically just went through, imported a points file, and then told it to tag all of them all at the same time. So I can very quickly get an idea of the points, what information is in, what elevation are they at, what data do they hold, what numbers are they. So if I find that there's a problem, I can always say, okay, well, I see that there's point 152 out in the field. That's not where I expected it to be. So let's take a look at this. And the nice thing is because everything is built off of the same consistent work points, it's something that everybody is going to be coordinated with. Now, again, this is me working in the desktop tools. <coughs> So what happens if I'm out in the field now? So I'm just going to hop over here. And now what I'm looking at is the Autodesk BIM 360 Layout app. Now, again, you don't have to be using the app. The app allows me to take the points here and connect to directly one of the many different robots that the service will work with. If I don't want to use the app or I'm working with a device that doesn't connect to this, it's not a big deal. I can import and export just like I did with Revit. So that way I'm still coordinating in the field and in the office. So what this is doing now, though, is it's going to be loading the file that I already have on BIM 360 Glue. And it's going to have points on there that I've created either in Revit or back and forth from the field. And then from there, what I can do is review the points. I can get dimensions. I can do markups. I can also connect to the device. Now, in the office I'm in right now, I don't have a device to connect to. So it's taking a little while as it looks for something to actually work with. Once it gets there. <laughs> Again, if anybody does have any questions, feel free to type them into the little question box. 
I'll be happy to answer them as I go through things or at the end. Give us one more second before I try a different file that's a little bit lighter. Go to meeting tends to chew up all the bandwidth. <laughs> There we go. All right. So once we have what we're looking at on the screen, if you've ever used BIM 360 Glue, the interface is going to feel very familiar. So I can orbit around, I can pan. Some of the graphics on the bottom will also look very familiar in terms of the measure tool, the view tool, and the markup tool. The one that's going to look new, though, is the one that's on the bottom right looks like a little target. And in fact, that's essentially what you are looking at. You're looking at a target for this device. So if I click on that, that tells me I'm not currently connected to a device, but again, I already knew that. This is going to show me the information related to this. Now at the moment, what I'm looking at are the different points that I've already created. If I click on one, it'll zoom in and bring me towards that. Wait for the screen to catch up here. And then I can do a setup. Now, again, the moment I'm not connected to one of the actual uh, robots, so I'm not able to go through the whole thing here. But this allows me to go through and actually pick the different points that I'm interested in or what I'm looking for. It allows me to filter these down based on different information. So when I'm actually working on something, again, real project, you're likely to have hundreds if not thousands of points. This allows me to drive in and say, okay, what I'm looking at right now are these specific ones in this range, in this location, so I can only focus on the ones that are within the realm that I care about. And also, if I am uploading this to BIM 360 Glue, and the method of me uploading that file, I can break that project or model down into the uh, areas that make it a little bit easier for people to work on. And as long as the coordinates are all consistent, it'll be the same regardless of which part of the file I'm working in. And if I do find problems, I can always come over here and create a markup. If I do have questions, I can always use the measure tool.